If you want to support my channel, please consider to check out my Patreon. Everyone who pledges to me will be added to my Discord. Higher tiers can also request me to review pretty much anything. If you don't want to bother with Patreon, you can also commission video reviews directly from me. For more information, check out the description below. Well, season 9 is around the corner and Red has said that it will be the last season of Friendship is Magic. Now at the time of recording this video, this hasn't been officially confirmed yet and plans quickly change the TV landscape. A show might be unexpectedly renewed last minute after all and which has been leaked a year ago might be old news by now. Still, frankly, I wouldn't mind if MP would come to a conclusion. I think the show had a very good run and I would have gladly traded in the last three seasons for one more season of Wonder Over Yonder. I mean just just think about it. MLP will end with a total of 221 episodes, one movie and the Christmas special. And this isn't counting Equestria Girls and some YouTube shorts. So don't tell me that the show was cut short. Now of course I wouldn't mind to see another two seasons either as long as they are good. Well by now I think that the show wrote itself into a couple of corners which would make it difficult to continue without some major retoolings. I mean they sort of tried something like that, first by making Star like the main character and then by introducing the school of friendship in season 8. And in case you haven't noticed, they didn't really do that much for that school. Besides that however, we had another addition to the show in season 6 that never really went anywhere. You remember Flurry Hurst? Remember how big of a deal it was when she was added to the show? A baby elegon. Everyone thought that would ruin the show, but actually kinda ended up one of the most inconsequential additions to the show ever. Yeah, she's a baby and an elegon. But most of the time she is just kinda there to look cute on Caden's head or to ruin Christmas parties. Since the introduction in the Crystalling, only one episode actually centered around her, and it was basically a rehash of baby cakes, which made Twilight look like an irresponsible lunatic. Yeah, Twilight. Bring that baby into a room full of children with a very contagious disease. Aunt of the year. In any case, it doesn't really matter if you think that Flurriard is the spawn of Satan or the most adorable thing ever. I think we can all agree that she, more often than not, feels like a rather pointless addition as the show doesn't do anything with her. And there is a very simple reason for that as well. She is a baby. And you can't really do a whole lot with a baby. Heck, even the one episode she got, A Flurry of Emotion, portrays her as almost too intelligent and self-aware to be a baby. There's only so far you can go with her being a baby before you turn her into a character like Stewie Griffin who is only a baby in name only. So yeah, there isn't really much more you can do with her besides having a different character taking care of her and running into trouble thanks to her great magical potential. So one thing I would suggest. How season 9 could mix things up is to age her up. Actually, it's not even really aging her up when you think about it. If you keep track of my videos, you might be aware that I already pointed it out a couple of times, but Flurryheart should by all accounts be older by now than she is. Since she was born back in season 6, we had a housewarming tale, the housewarming club, and the best gift ever. All three episodes center around the half-warming Eve holiday. And while there is an argument to be made that half-warming club and the best gift ever take place during the same year, it just doesn't seem to be the case to me as we can see the student six leaving for the holidays in the best gift ever while they all decided to stay in Ponyville during half-warming club. In addition, the fact that Orcellus tells us how Shangeling celebrates the holidays indicates that there was at least one half-warming Eve that happened off screen unless a house warming tale actually happened after the season 6 finale, which I consider unlikely. So if we take everything at face value, Flurry Hut would be at least 4 years old by now. This doesn't sound too outlandish either as ever since season 6, time jumps have been much more common. While they never address how much time passes over the season, they just seem to jump more over the place and it just seems that simply more time passes in between episodes. Perhaps the worst offender in that regard is season 8. I mean, preparing all her notes, getting the approval of the EEA and building the school itself probably took quite a bit of time even with the help of magic. In addition to that, the episode non-compete clause outright states that Fluttershy has been teacher of the month nine times in a row, which clues you in that at least nine months must have been passed since school days. Which is by the way the only time the show gives us such an unambiguous statement. 
So yeah, although I am less for aging up Flurry hard than to simply acknowledge her age. She is basically old enough by now that she could be a character with actual dialogue. Now, admittedly, I would maybe age her up a bit further and make her about 6 years old, so she would be about school age by now. This would allow us to actually do something with her. Maybe she could enroll at Twilight's friendship school, maybe she is a bit too sheltered and socially awkward as a result, or maybe she is a bit of a spoiled brat. Depending on what personalities the writers decide to give her, the show could use her to teach a variety of lessons. Not to mention that she might have a hard time to fit in with ponies of her age, thanks to the simple fact that she is a princess. Not only that, we could also have an episode in which the Cutie Mark Crusaders maybe try to help her getting a Cutie Mark. Now you don't have to make her a main character and have her save the day in the season finale, but in general it opens up a lot of new possibilities. Of course, if you allow Princess Floria to grow up, the show would need to acknowledge the passing of time in general, which, while it would mean little for the main six, as they are all already adults with jobs, would mean the world for the Cutie Mark Crusaders and other shy characters, as the show would need to age them up too. By pushing them in their actual teens, I suppose this would open up a couple of new possibilities as well. Also, while we are at it, can we make my Terra Mask Scootaloo ship canon? Now I would really appreciate it if MLP would decide to do this for their final season, as it really started to bother me at some point after the CMC got the cutie marks. The breaking point was the appropriately named Forever Philly, which was all about the fact that Sweetie Belle got older, while Rarity still saw Sweetie as her baby sister. It started to bother me in particular, as Sweetie Belle doesn't look any older than any of these small children that enjoyed the activities Sweetie was supposedly too old for. Frankly, I made peace with the fact that the show would never let anyone grow up. But then the mold down happened, and Spike got his wings. And while he doesn't appear any older than before, it is still a sign of him growing up and a noticeable change for his character model. So if Spike can get a new model, why not the Cutie Mark Crusaders? No, admittedly, this is probably just wishful thinking. I think Spike's wings opened up the possibility for this kind of change, but I still have my doubts that it will actually happen. But it is certainly something I want to see, as it is long overdue. But what about you? Do you want to see Flurry Heart as an actual main cast member? What are your thoughts on the Cute Mark Crusaders being actual teenagers? Let me know in the comments below. I am Tricky Fox. Stay foxy. Sly as a fox, you got me under your spell. But you know I'll never tell that I know you know so well. Sometimes